Okay, let's take a look at an example of using RhinoMox stubs to control program flow. Notice the student registration service has, has changed a little bit. I've, uh, I'm also injecting now a student validator dependency through the constructor. And I've changed the register new student method to match the code that we were just looking at in the slides. So only if the student is valid does do we call uh, save on the student repository and otherwise we throw an argument exception. So let's take a look at the tests. I've uh, created two tests now. Uh, the first test, register new student, saves the student when the student is valid. So I've renamed that test and uh, Notice that I'm passing in a new student validator here, which is not the ideal way to handle this. And I've created a second test. Register new student throws an exception when the student is not valid. And I'm not doing much with Rhino Mox here um, as far as uh, tracking uh, calls to objects or anything. I'm really just using NUnit to assert a failure if uh, we do not catch an exception. So if an exception is thrown when we call this, we'll jump down here and we won't hit the assert.fail. And I assert that uh, the exception thrown is uh, of an instance of argument exception. So in both these cases, I'm passing in a new student validator. If we look at that student validator, it's very simple. Of course, a real validator would do much more than this, but um, just for simplicity of uh, this demo, I just return uh, true if the student is not null. So let's take a look at these tests. We'll run them first of all. And they both pass because uh, in this case, I am passing in a valid student and uh, uh, the save method was called. And in this case, I am passing in an invalid student. Well, notice I'm just passing in null here. And uh, an exception is thrown. And so that code is working. But uh, this is not the type of test we want because it is not isolated from the student, student validator. So uh, let's do that first of all. We're going to create another mock here. And it is going to be a student validator. Okay. So we now have a mock student validator. And let's pass that in here. And let's do the same thing down here. Oops. Okay. So uh, one thing to note, this uh, demo is on Rhino Mock Stubs, um, but I am generating a mock. That's kind of an unfortunate nomenclature that seems to uh, be pervasive in uh, mock frameworks. And uh, you can tell that even I called it a mock framework. <laughs> really, these frameworks are uh, fakes frameworks or test double frameworks. And um, Rhino mocks, like um, other frameworks like mock, for example, uh, uses one object called a, which they call a mock, even though it actually can act as several different types of test doubles. So. Um, in this case, we're using the mock student repository as a mock because we are tracking um, the calls that are made against it and then asserting. And that, that's the job of a mock. A stub, uh, a stub is really used for controlling program flow and uh, just stubbing in uh, a proxy that can help return different values uh, from methods called on that object and is not really used for tracking calls against it. But the mock uh, that's returned by the mock repository does both. So uh, let's run these tests now. 
and you'll see that the uh, register new student throws an exception when the student is not valid uh, succeeded but the register new student saves the student when the student is valid did not now let's take a look at why that is so if we take step into the register new student method we apparently hit this case uh, this code in both cases and we never hit the student repository save at least we definitely did not hit it when the uh, in the success case where we expected to and so the reason why that's happening is that this is now a rhino mox uh, stub and if you do not specify uh, what should happen when a method is called, then uh, RhinoMox is just going to return uh, what that method would by, uh, by default. So the default value of that, or default value of that return type. So since validate student is a boolean, if I do not tell RhinoMox what uh, what validate student should return, it will always return false. And so. In both cases here, RhinoMox returned false uh, because I didn't tell it to do anything different. And so in both cases, it threw the exception that the student is not valid. So let's go in and change that. So here I have a mock student validator, which I'm really going to use as a step. So let's use this mock student validator and stub the call to validate student and what I'm doing here for that argument I don't want you to worry about too much um, I will cover this in the section on constraints so this is essentially a constraint on the, the argument that's passed into the validate student method that says uh, I don't care what it is uh, it can be anything so um, when the validate student method is called on the mock student repository I want to tell it to uh, return true okay so uh, essentially I'm just saying when validate student is called on the mock student validator with any argument I don't care uh, what it is but whenever validate student is called I just want you to always return true now whenever that call occurs true will always be returned for this test so now if I run those tests they both pass and we can come down here to the uh, to the test for when it does not uh, pass validation and notice that it passed even though um, I'm using the mock uh, but that's because the default behavior is for it to return false so it's essentially the same as saying this here but this is the default behavior so it's not not necessary to specify it and if I run those tests again they should both still pass and they do. So uh, now uh, I'm controlling the program flow inside the register new student uh, method using this stub. So when uh, in the first test, when it runs, it comes in here and the student validator, what's being injected in, and which is a Rhino Mox uh, mock object. And I've told it to stub the validate stu student method so that whenever it's called, it just returns true. That causes it to come in here. In the second test, I stubbed it to return false, and that caused it to come in here. And we are now successfully controlling the program flow uh, for this method and uh, isolating the pieces of the code that we want to test.